And often we know there's a prompting of the Lord, and one of the powers of being in a body like this with people that are serious about serving God, I'm not comparing us to any other Christians but or, or churches, I just know that we've got people here that take this really seriously. And that if you need advice, open it up. Say, this is what I think the Lord is saying to me. What do you think? Would you pray about this with me? And we do that all the time. That's one of the best things that we could do for people is help you learn from what we've learned. We don't have all the answers, but collectively we have a lot more than we would on our own, right? We need each other. So this is back in Acts chapter 9. And that King Agrippa was the one that said, wow, you would almost make me be converted to be a Christian, wouldn't you, Paul? So he clearly was on board, right? He was clearly on board. And, and Paul said, yeah, I would like you to be a Christian and be just like me other than these chains. He didn't mind being a prisoner even, right? Like, it's like, nope. I'm, not, I'm on board with, the, I'm going to be a Navy SEAL. I'm not ringing the bell. I'm on an assignment. I don't care. I know I'm going to Rome. Might, might not end well. But I have a better future in store of what's going to happen. So this says in Acts chapter 9, because there's another man who had to say a dangerous yes if you know the story. Saul rose from the ground after, you know, falling down. Although, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a man, a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord rings him up. Hello? Uh, your name didn't come up by the caller ID. Who is this? The Lord said to him in a vision, oh, look at that. It's not even the call yet. <laughs> the Lord had said to him in a vision prior, Ananias, and he said, here I am, Lord. And the Lord said, rise up, go to the street called Straight, and a house of Judas, look up a man named, a man of Tarsus named Saul, for behold, he's praying. Don't you love that? Don't you love that? This is like seeing into the king's bedroom when, when the king's the enemy, like the prophet was able to do. And like, who... Who's the cheat here? Who's snitching me out? Nobody. It's that prophet, man. He, could, he hears what you're saying in your bedroom. And God is now dropping this picture into Ananias' heart saying, there's a man named Paul, and I showed him. Lance Well now says, he places our name in the future. He already said to Ananias that this was going to happen. He already said to Saul that this was going to happen before it happened. But without our yes... It's going to be somebody else going to get that blessing. So you get the point that hearing the voice of the Lord is the most important thing. <laughs> because the voice of another, we will not follow. That's going to lead us down the wrong path. Narrow is the road that leads to life. Wide is the road of destruction. And many that go down that. But narrow is the road that says yes to the right things and prospers because they're obedient to the Lord. He's praying. He's seen in a vision a man named Ananias has come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. And here's where we could all just relate. And whenever you see the word but, you know, there's going to be a little hesitation. <laughs> Ananias has to say, uh, you yeah, sure you got the right number. Like, wait a minute, God. Like, where'd you get this phone number from? Because there's other Ananiases around here. I've heard about this guy. And much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he's a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and children of the earth. The same word that God had given to Saul, he's now saying to Ananias in this vision, in this dream, he's got an assignment from me, and I want you to be part of that assignment. Wow. Really? Cool. I'll get my life insurance in order and I'll get my will in order just in case I'm not hearing. <laughs> don't, you don't have to do that. <laughs> Try to keep you engaged here, right? All right, so he's going to be used for I will show him how much fame he's going to have. I will show Paul that 2,000 years later in Basking Ridge, New Jersey, they're still going to be talking about him. He'll be popular, he'll have his own TV show. I want to show him all the cool things that are going to happen to him. <laughs> oh, different translation. I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. What, who answers that job description? I see a better future. I'm going to be a Navy SEAL. If I'm on the football team, I don't want to sit on the bench. I want to play. 
I'm going to run to win. And if there's some dis, if there's some inconvenience along the way, well, where do we get this picture that it's supposed to be convenient to be a Christian? And you know, it sounds like tickling my ears to tell me something that might just be a little couple of shades off. Of hey, no, this is, it's not easy, but it's worth it. It's so worth it to do it God's way. You're going to get so much more results. You're never going to want to go back to the counterfeit when you get plugged into the real thing. I'm going to show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house, laying his hands on um, Brother Saul. The Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you're Saul thinking, oh, wow. God spoke to somebody else and told me that I was praying and showed me that he would be here. That builds my faith. That builds my confidence. You come to church and somebody walks up to you and says, I don't really know you too well, but I was praying and the Lord put you on my heart. That's a word of wisdom. That's a word of knowledge. It's a prophetic word. And it doesn't just have to be one of the elders, you know. It could be somebody in the church who got a word for you. Then you have to decide whether you want to listen. And you could come up and say, hey, that person over there, they gave me this word. Should I trust them? Yeah, you can trust them. Yeah, they're a Christian. They know how to hear from God. And it's not like you have to be doing this five times a day for the rest of your life. The Lord will prompt you. And then when you're obedient and you say it, you know, you're going to get it perfectly right every time. No, but who does? And how about developing our gift in him? Amen? I'm, I'm winded down. Immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. And then he rose and was baptized and taking food. He was strengthened. And now he writes about this to Timothy, this and other things about his prior, how he lived before he, he accepted Christ, before the road to Damascus. He said, I was slandering the things of God and persecuting and attacking his people, and yet he was still merciful to me. Because I acted in ignorance apart from faith. And when I read this, I remembered a, a very specific scene in my life before I was saved. I was on, uh, on my way to upstate New York with some friends of ours. We were going to be at a friend's house up there. And, and I was saying, man, I'm really worried about my mom. She has turned into a Jesus freak. And these two other guys are, you know, they're druggies like I was. And they're like, yeah, man, what a shame. They're getting duped by all these television preachers. And they're giving their money over. And it's all a big sham. And I'm going, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. <laughs> Dropped the mic. Busted. Yeah, I mean, I was just back in the car. I remembered where I was sitting. I remembered who I was with. And, you know, John Wimber had a similar thing happen. I'm a fool for Christ. Whose fool are you? Right? I was a fool for the world. Now I'm a fool for Christ. Great trade, by the way. Great trade all day long. Best thing you can do. And then there's, there's another good kind of but here. Even though I was slandering things of God, persecuting, but I acted in ignorance, but he poured his grace over me, and I was flooded in an abundance of grace and faith and love that can only be found one place. Only be found in that same place that Isaiah was transported. And he's like, oh man, I'm in trouble. Right? I fell down like a dead man. No, no. Here's, here's an ember from the fire. I'm going to clean your lips, and then you're going to say, here I am. No matter what a waste I was, I'm not a waste anymore. I've got a mission for my life. I'm not going to destroy people anymore. I'm going to try to save them and show them the redemption that God showed me. I'm going to show them. And we'll get comments sometimes on our, on our social media. And people are like, well, what should I say? And, you know, an easy thing is just give them your testimony. You don't have to get into all the, I mean, it's good to get into Bible scripture and all that too, but don't try to memorize the scriptures. Tell them what God did for you. They don't know that story and, and give God the glory because that's the only way it could happen. Verse 15, here's a statement worthy of trust. Jesus, the anointed, the liberating king. Don't you love that name? The liberating king. This is the voice version. The liberating king. He came into the world to save sinners. And I, right here, me, Paul, used to be Saul. I'm the worst. Of all those sinners. So if he can use me, he can use anybody. 